Hey, thanks for joining us. Isn't that a fake intro? Scanning film. First thing you're going to need is a flatbed scanner. I've got the Epson Perfection V600 photo. You're going to need some developed negatives. You will also need some sort of dust removal apparatus. I've got a Giotto rocket blower right here. You're going to need the negative holders that come with the Epson scanner. You also probably want a film binder to store the negatives in. And you know, if you want to rescan them, you can, you can archive them that way. You're definitely going to need some gloves. I've got some uh, blue nitrile gloves, standard. Get them from Amazon. Having a bit of a hard time putting these on because I've already worn these multiple times. All right, I got my trusty negative sleeve here, and uh, today I'm going to scan the top one in the middle, you see. So just reach in there, grab it out nice and gently. This is why we got the gloves on so we don't smudge it or anything. Don't want to get our fingerprints on there. So on a film strip, there's an emulsion side and a shiny side. Uh, we want to put it emulsion side down. So grab your negative carrier, pop that baby open, and we're going to put this in emulsion side down. Another way you can tell is that the letters on the film, so for this one Kodak Portra, those are reversed. So just uh, slide that into the notches on the left and the right, make sure it's locked in there, and then you can click it to seal the film into place. Now I'm going to take the dust blower and thoroughly dust off as much dust as I can from the film. There's no reason to not be as thorough as you possibly can with this, because again, you'll save yourself so much time in post-processing, cleaning up dust and scratches and whatnot. After you're done dusting off the film, you can boot up the scanner and load this in. Just pop open the lid to your flatbed here, place that in the top left corner and line it up with the notches. Make sure it doesn't move around at all. And let's close the lid and move over to the computer. Scanning software I use is Silverfast SE8, which you can actually get for free if you have an Epson V550 or 600. Of course, I got you. I'm going to link this in the description. You just have to click the link and enter your serial number if you do have one of those scanners, and you can go ahead and download it. All right, so now that you got that Silverfast, that good good, go ahead and boot that up. Make sure your scanner is connected to your computer via USB, and it should just pop up right here and you can see I've got the Epson V600. Go ahead and click Start. All right, so here we are in Silverfast. Now, we do want to do a pre-scan, but before we do that, let's make sure we're on transparency, negative, 48 arrow 24-bit, and uh, make sure it's a TIFF, and that you're saving to where you want to save it to. Let's set our resolution to 3200. 3200 is perfect for like any web images, uh, Instagram, etc. If you're doing a physical print, I would bump it up to 6400, which is where this maxes out. Go into your top left corner, you'll see the pre-scan button. Click that and we can run the pre-scan. Now that the pre-scan is done, I'm going to do an additional zoom in scan by clicking the magnifying glass on the left here. This will allow me to make more precise adjustments to the red border. All right, so we got our uh, zoomed in scan. We can just adjust these borders ever so slightly by dragging them from the sides. And I'm happy with that. That looks precise to me. So I'm going to go into the Negafix module over here and I'm going to set my film stock. This is the greatest part about Silverfast. So I can go to Vendor, Kodak, Portra 400, because that's what I shot this on. Uh, for, it says 400 NC, that's 400 neutral color. There's also uh, ultra color, vivid color, etc. Feel free to also play around with it. Um, there's some cool things you can get by putting it on 800. is like a little more contrasty. For some reason, the 6x6 has an even more washed out look than just the regular NC. Go to the histogram. You can add that by clicking it, and it'll show up here. And you'll just get basic adjustments to your... Uh, RGB curves, which we covered in the last video, and then you get the uh, the RGB consolidated into one. I'm going to bring my midtones up a little bit and the highlights up a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the unsharp mask or USM. You'll see it on the left in the toolbar. 
Uh, that just makes the scan sharper overall. It's just a basic sharpening tool. You can leave that on auto. And I'm also going to add the ISRD, which is the infrared scratch and dust removal tool. This is such a fantastic little tool. Uh, it saves you so much time cleaning up dust in Photoshop or Lightroom after the scan is complete. Basically how it works is it, it does an infrared scan on top of the normal scan, which does take more time, but I mean, come on, man, it's, it's so worth it. Just throw that baby on there, put it on auto. So just to recap, you got your ISRD, your unsharp mask, you got your negafix, adjusted the borders to not have any black in them, and you've set your resolution to 3200 DPI in the folder that you want to save it, you are good to scan, dude. Just hit Control S or the button in the top right to scan and you're good to go. All right, okay, so we've opened this up in Photoshop and there's a couple things you can do uh, to finish this up, sharpen it up, make it look nice. So duplicate the layer and we're gonna go to Filter Sharpen, oops, excuse me, Filter High Pass. And the high pass, so you're going to see this kind of like radius, similar to the radius sharpen adjustment in Lightroom. Um, but as you drag it up more, you, you can see the uh, outline of the most defined shapes in the image is the best way I could explain it. So drag it until you can just faintly see the outline of all the defined shapes. So for this, I think it's around 4, 4.1. Looks good. Put that baby on overlay, go to blending mode, overlay. And if I zoom in here, you can see what it's doing. It's making, it just looks amazing, honestly. So um, we're going to put the opacity around 50%. That usually looks pretty on point. I'm going to actually make this 60. Yeah, that looks amazing. So let's go ahead and merge those layers. I'm going to duplicate this layer once more. And I'm going to go to Filter, Sharpen, Sharpen Edges, add even a little more sharpening. And then we are going to go to Image Adjustments, Black and White. And I want to bring down my blues a little bit. So yeah, this is where you can apply the, uh, the knowledge from the previous video. Basically, I want to drag my reds and blues down to contrast better with the greens and yellows here. That looks pretty good to me. So to make this blend in, go to blending mode, soft light. We will uh, put the opacity around 10 or 20. Don't want much. Yeah, I think 15 looks pretty good. Yeah, it might be a little too much. 10. Let's just add a little bit more contrast, made the blue here and some of the deeper orange red colors more dark. And then we can just go ahead and merge those and export this. And we're really all done. Um, you can see there's, I didn't even have to do any dust cleanup on this image whatsoever. I mean, there is not a speck of dust that I can see. And that just about wraps it up. Really appreciate you uh, tuning into this video. I know how frustrated I was when I first started scanning and I was not getting the results I wanted whatsoever. But I'm glad I found something that works for me and I really hope it works for you too. So stay safe out there, enjoy some uh, B-roll photos, and I'll see you in the next video.